Fellow traders, welcome back to Insider Financial. I'm Alex Carlson, and in this video, we will recap last week's stock market action and discuss our game plan for the coming week. But before we dive in, Sunday night, we are releasing a new report on a small cap trading just under a buck 30 with almost 9% of the float short. The short interest is 2.79 million shares and Friday's volume was just 64,000 shares. With some interest, we could see a major short squeeze in this stock. We will be releasing this report Sunday night along with a video on it. Let's kick off the new trading week with a bang. Click to the subscribe button and notification bell so you can start your research immediately Sunday night. And to get our market moving reports on top small caps, click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up with your email on any of the pop-ups on Insider Financial. After you sign up with your email, you can then sign up with your mobile number. Text messages are the fastest way to get our alerts and it works for all numbers worldwide. Simply enter your country code first followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And after you sign up, you'll get a welcome email, which includes a free copy of our ebook. Our ebook, our email service, and our text messaging service are all free service from Insider Financial. We don't run any Telegram groups, Discords, or paid subscription services whatsoever. Well, guys, the S&P 500 on Friday advanced 1.37% for the week to end at 5,026 points, posting gains in four out of the five sessions. The index notched its fifth, weekly, fifth straight weekly gain and in doing so achieved several new historic milestones. The S&P on Thursday briefly crossed the 5,000 points mark for the first time ever and then on Friday closed above that level again for the first time ever. Some interesting statistics to consider, it took Wall Street's benchmark index 719 trillion trading days or nearly three years to close above 5,000 points from 4,000 points. The gauge had cleared the former mark back on April 1st, 2021. This was also the longest stretch between 1,000 point milestones for the S&P 500 since the 1,227 trading days or nearly five years it took between its 2,000 and 3,000 point levels. That was between August 2014 to July 2019. The index march to 5,000 was driven once again by technology stocks along with a largely positive earnings season. Um, the S&P 500 technology sector gained about 3% for the week, uh, adding uh, onto a more than 10% gain so far this year. Most of its advance was driven by chip stocks and the Magnificent 7 Club. Meanwhile, the average number of S&P 500 companies beating earnings estimates this quarter is trending slightly higher than the last four, helping drive sentiment. Not all is entirely rosy on Wall Street, however. This week, especially with the big advance in the Magnificent 7 Club, Concerns over stretch valuations and weightage have abounded, though those worries have been soothed somewhat by small cap stocks making up some of their green on their larger peers. The IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, is trading just under 200. 200 is the breakout level that I've been talking about. And this week we saw some major low float runners, uh, short squeeze plays like HOLO, which I'll be covering uh, also uh, tomorrow. Uh, economic data last week was a mixed bag uh, with the reports pointing to uh, favorable inflation trends but an economy that might be slightly stronger than the Fed wants. On Monday, the Institute for Supply Management's gauge of U.S. services activity for January rose to a four-month high. The labor market continued to show resilience in the wake of last Friday's significantly hotter than expected uh, non-farm payrolls reports. Uh, with initial jobless claims on Thursday coming in lower than expected. Looking at the earnings season, the most notable name that reported uh, last week was Walt Disney. The theme park and movie giant Endow 30 component delivered a quarterly earnings report that saw the legacy company's uh, top expectations driven by cost cuts and promised further capital returns through a bigger dividend and the restart of stock buybacks. On Friday, Cloudflare uh, net shares rose over 24% after the content delivery network and cloud security platform topped expectations in Q4 and issued higher than expected annual profit guidance. And I'm going to be talking about uh, this in, in t tomorrow's video uh, in terms of Going over to my trading chart, I hate when uh, trading view they make you save uh, before you go into another uh, uh, 
uh, what I was saying, uh, another uh, chart jumping in between. But here is uh, Cloudflare Net. Uh, in, in this here, I have my pre-market high, today's high, pre-market low. It is you know it happens in real time uh, so that you're watching this but the pre-market high was 117.90 on Cloudflare uh, the stock opened at 110.10 uh, uh, ran to 116 uh, before closing uh, the the day uh, at 107.92 it never got above that pre-market high so that's why when you see, go over here and you look at the daily chart you can see this red candle uh, so it, it rallied at the open and then just couldn't hold those gains throughout the day. Uh, crypto stocks were hot on Friday. Uh, Bitcoin is is just under forty eight thousand. It's above the forty seven thousand key level. Um, we saw big gains in uh, cl uh, Clean Spark was up 32%. Mara was up over 10%. Coinbase up over 7%. Uh, MicroStrategy up almost 10%. So again, crypto stocks are hot. Going to be covering this more uh, this week. Uh, for this week, coming week, Monday, options trading volume and short interest are still high on uh, New York Community Bank Corp, NYCB, and Terra Wolf, W-U-L-F. Uh, NYCB is a popular uh, stock on Wall Street bets right now along with nvidia smci uh, and mara um, we are also the most overbought stocks per their 14-day relative street index include advm uh, super micro smci this has just been an absolute beast of a stock uh, the options have just uh, you've been owning calls trading calls on this you've just been printing money as absolutely uh, huge huge uh, gains in SMCI uh, most oversold names uh, include Sigma Lithium SGML at uh, New York Community Bank Corp uh, NYCB and Extreme Networks EXTR so extremely oversold uh, insiders have been buying NYCB. We'll be watching this one for more gains, uh, for more of a bounce uh, this week. Uh, all week, uh, Fed speakers will be out in full force. The schedule includes Thomas Borkin speaking at an Atlantic Economics Club event, Neil Kashkari participating in an Ac Economic Club of Minnesota uh, discussion, Austin Goolsby uh, speaking in a Q&A format, and both Mary Daly and Michael Barr speaking at the NABE conference, and Ralphiel Bostick giving a talk on the economic outlook. On Tuesday, notable companies due to report include Coca-Cola, Shopify, Airbnb, Marriott International, Datadog, Molson Coors, MGM Resorts, Hasbro, and Biogen. Options trading implies large share price moves for upstart holdings and lift after they report. Uh, the CPI report for January will be re released. The core inflation rate is expected to be up 0.3% percent uh, month over month and 3.7 percent year over year and a slight deceleration from the 3.9 percent pace in december average hourly weekly earnings are forecast to be up 0.5 percent on wednesday notable companies due to report include cisco sony Kraft heinz global payments uh, options trading implies double digit share price moves for twilio and quantumscape uh, the january retail sales report will be released retail sales are forecast to be up 0.3 percent from december after stripping out the auto and gas categories. On Thursday, notable companies due to report include Applied Materials, Deere, Stellantis, DoorDash, Wendy's, and Coinbase. Options trading implies large share price moves for SunPower, SPWR, and Roku after they report. Uh, SPWR has been a great trader over the past a uh, few weeks so certainly going to be watching this one had some major spikes uh and then but it's it's overall it's been in a downtrend you can look here uh, it's below the mo moving averages uh 274 is the pivot low uh I'll be watching this one see if we can if they deliver a good earnings report and we get a spike on Thursday, uh, we also get the uh, producer price index will be released for January. Or economists forecast a 0.1% month-over-month increase. And the initial University of Michigan consumer sentiment reading for January will be released. On Friday, uh, not much happening. No major earnings reports or economic releases. It is a long weekend with markets closed on Monday for Washington's birthday. And then, as I said, you know, a little primer on options trading, uh, you know, especially on a Friday, markets tend to make new highs or lows on a Friday. Uh, they like to print uh, print those options. So again, if we're in a downtrend, you're going to see stocks ending on the lows, uh, those 
puts start making money and, and in this case these calls lotto calls in nvidia and SM, and smci uh just went absolutely bonkers on friday uh you, the key is risk a little to make a make a lot uh, you know smci 720 calls uh went from five dollars to 25 dollars you know 500 dollars to 2500 bucks uh, nvidia 710 calls went from three dollars to over eleven dollars you know you can really grow a small account trading options you know but just don't yolo you know pick your setups you know trade around highs and lows of the pre-market in previous days and use a stop loss you don't have to risk a hundred percent you know if, if it's uh, if you go in and you if things are working out remember on friday it's all about time so either the trade is going to work out or not because those options especially if you're doing the weekly options on friday they expire so again there, you don't have to uh, stay in all day. Uh, that's how you'll just eat eat up your capital. And if you want specific options trades, sign up. You know, this way I know you're serious, and I will update subscribers uh, with more info in the future. I will of course be scanning pre market each trading day. Uh, if I see anything else, I will let subscribers know. And that's why it's so important to sign up, and it's completely free, guys. At Insider Financial, we put stocks on your radar with potential outsized moves. As I repeatedly stated, there are always opportunities in the markets daily. The important thing is identifying which stocks to be in to grab that money. The key is trading green, not red. We're looking for those momentum plays that have catalysts. It's all about finding the momentum before it happens and riding that wave. That's what we're doing here at Insider Financial. And to get our small cap reports, we cover low floats, short squeezes, recent IPOs, biotech FTA plays, AI stocks, EV stocks, lithium stocks, and insider buying. Click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups on Insider Financial. No spam. Your info is never shared. Unsubscribe anytime. You can even sign up just to see the level of research we do here at Insider Financial and unsubscribe. Remember, Insider Financial and I are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is an solicitation or recommendation by Seller Hold Securities. This video is our opinion. It's meant for informational and educational purposes only and does not provide investment advice. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Performance. Thanks for joining me today on Insider Financial. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss the latest insights and strategies. Until next time, happy trading. This is Alex Carlson signing off. Bye-bye.